Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Open Book Besties. I am your co-host, Misty Walker. And I am Kay Webster. And we are romance authors um, here to entertain you, hopefully. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we think that we're entertaining. We are to ourselves. And then, you know, we kind of have like this, like, uh, maybe we're not, this is stupid. And then somebody's like, oh, we listened to your podcast. It made us laugh. We loved it. And then I'm like, okay, yay. We are entertaining at least one person (laughs) besides Missy's dad. And and my dad. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Our listenership is growing every day. I did tell my dad not to listen to the last one after our whole daddy kink talk. (laughs) What did he say? Okay. Yeah, he said, okay. I told my mom too. I was like, don't listen. I don't know if she listens anyway, but. (laughs) That episode, please. (laughs) So today we thought we would talk a little bit about editing because you just got edits back. And lately I've had some pretty intense edits with my books. And uh, we thought we would talk about that. Right. Because, well, first of all, my friend Lilith the other day said, you know, it was like a week ago before these edits came in. And she said, you know, you're working on some edits and it was for a different story. It was like a little short story. So it went really quick. And I was like, oh yeah, I did. them." And she's like, already? And I'm like, yeah, when you've been writing a million books, you kind of like have this down to a science. And she was like, okay. So she's like, wow, that's cool. I hope I get there that way, that way one day. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm all on top of the world. Feeling and cocky about yourself. Yes, I was. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I write really good stuff, you know, but anyway, and then, um, I got edits back from um, Triple Threat, which Dangerous Press did a different editor than I was used to. And I got some intense edits back and I was just like, oh my gosh, I suck. You know, <laughs> like I was like, how terrible am I? Like, oh my gosh. And, and edits that normally take me like, you know, a day of working hard on it It took me like three full hard working days and I was about to pull my hair out at the end of it and I was like this is just insane but it was all stuff that needed to be done and then it made me question all my other books (laughs) yeah do you get embarrassed I get embarrassed when I get my edits back I'm like oh my gosh that was so stupid I'm so humiliated she must think I am such a hack job right right well and then there's like questions like um I don't really understand why she would do this. And I'm like, I don't either. Why would she do that? Like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. Why would I make my character do this? You know, like in in the whole time, you're just like, wow. Okay. And I don't know. It it was, it, it was good to have that edit because it really like, you know, knocks you down a few pegs mentally. So you try harder and you work harder and everything that and, and it's not to say certain editors are better or worse. It's just everybody's different and they see different things or they're looking for different things. And, she, you know, it's almost like maybe sometimes my editors get used to what the way I write or whatever. And so when you have somebody that doesn't really know you, they, you know, put it through a different set of, you know, eyes different or whatever. Eyes, yeah. And, yeah. And then it's like, oh my gosh, you know, and so... I had to fix all this stuff and I mean it is going to make it better but it was just like and it was all like developmental stuff like it wasn't you know uh, of course all my necessary commas had to be in added in because you know that's me but this was like you know like timeline issues and just things that I never really like had problems with and it wasn't that I was having problems writing this book because I read through the book and I was like this book is the bomb like it's awesome people are gonna love it and then I was like Boop, 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 got knocked down several pegs and I was like oh my gosh I suck you know this isn't even enjoyable to read but after I fixed it all I felt like that. oh that's good yeah I um every single time I get a especially a timeline issue because I know I suck at timelines anyway every time I get a timeline question I'm like I I'm the worst ever 
I shouldn't even be writing books. And then they don't fix it for you. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, uh, they just say like the timeline doesn't add up here. And it's like, okay, obviously I can't figure this out myself. You right. have to tell me. Right. Help, help. <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. Well, and that brings me up to another thing. Um, I was talking to this other girl who was actually listening and I won't say her name or give away too many details because, you know, but she was saying that um, her editor had pointed out like okay this this area is you know it needs to be addressed or fixed or it's too weak or whatever and it needs to be done earlier on and she was like okay but where like I have no idea like where you know and and then it, mm-hmm. you know I think that's where a lot of people are like oh well my editor's not good and it's not necessarily that it's the it's just that they're they're identifying a spot they're not the creators they're not the writers Mm-hmm. they're they can see that something's wrong and they want you to take your magic and go back in there and you know and most times it's almost like sticker shock you see it at first and you're like oh my god how am I gonna do this yeah, yeah. and then when you stop for a second and you think about it and you let it just soak in a little bit then you're like okay I can go fix this Ch- chill out and then when you fix it you're like oh, okay I'm smart I did it you know but that first like initial thing you're like I can't do this this is too hard like I'm so overwhelmed because it is overwhelming to basically have a laundry list of all your mistakes and all of your errors and all of your weaknesses just thrown in in your face all red Uh you're like oh my god (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's probably my least favorite part well I I will say I like doing edits because I like the feeling of knowing that my book is better right but I, I, it just, it just hurts when you see all of the comments and so many things highlighted and you're like, I really honestly thought I gave her the best product that I could, you know? I, well, and that's how I felt too, because, you know, I'm so like OCD, like I finished my book and then I read back through it on my Kindle and I fix every typo, every error, every yeah. little possible thing. And I'm thinking this is like ready to go to Amazon and be out there. Yeah. And it is mm-hmm. not, it's not even no. close. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no. So, and, and like on my book, like I had to add like 6,000 more words to that's a lot it was that's what took so long because it wasn't just like hey add another three chapters or whatever it was like you know over here it's kind of weak we need more we need more back and forth we need more back and forth and and there were several spots of that where it was like you're you're jumping to this too fast you're jumping to this too fast and it was like oh my god so slow it down slow it down slow it down and as somebody who writes very like concise and likes to just move along and not you know linger in areas too long I kind of just do it across the board and there are times when it's like a very very emotional moment or a pivotal scene that does need to be drawn out a little bit more and so I have to face the fact that you know not I can't just whiz on through the whole thing like I have to slow it down in some parts and you got to add a lot of banter and back and forth and you know but on the flip side Sometimes when the editor gives you a compliment, oh my god, it's the best like thing you in the whole world. Are the best person ever. You're like, I'm yeah, amazing. Like, yeah, it, especially if it's like one compliment through the whole <laughs> manuscript or whatever. You're like, I'm so amazing. Yeah, yeah. You just like clutch on to that one comment, and you're just, and that kind of helps ease all of the. <laughs> well, and and the one comp. The, the one compliment that she gave me on, well, not she gave me lots, but there was one that really stood out to me. And she said that um, I'm really good at dialogue and weaving in backstory into the dialogue where it's not an information dump and it yeah. sneaks in there and you reveal the story or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm good at something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, as I was adding in those extra, you know, back and forth, which were a lot of them were dialogue. And I was like, look at me go. I'm amazing. She said, I'm amazing. At this. Look how amazing I am at this, you know, <laughs> I'm going to prove her right. <laughs> right. She's going to be so proud of me. <laughs> yes. I think that all the time, whenever I add something, I'm like, oh, she's going to, she's going to love this. You know, <laughs> like I'm writing the book exactly for my editor. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, you know, I had a book like a long time ago, Dirty Ugly Toy. And I thought it was really good. And the editor 
did some deep developmental stuff in there that I wasn't expecting, you know, because by Dirty Ugly Toy, I had written quite a few books. So it, it hit me out of like left field. And I ended up adding 11,000 words to that book. And for me, that's like a lot to add yeah. after edits. And, but then I was like, so proud of how it turned out. I was like, she was right. Like everything that she, you know, told me to like work on, I really needed to. And yeah, it was fine without it, but I don't want it to be fine. I want it to be amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I want people to really like, you know, I do need to dig into some of those parts. So. So you have explain how you like, okay, you have your book. It's, you think it's finished. You've read through it. You think it's amazing. What do you do at that point? So like after I've like read through it and all of that, after we, you've read through it, not just written it, just, yeah. Yeah. Like okay, when so- you think it's the best it can be, what do you do at that point? I mean, I know the answer, but I want everybody else to know. <laughs> Oh, I just send it to the editor or is that what you mean? You just send it to the editor. Oh. You don't have betas. You don't oh, have. Uh, yeah. I mean, you and Elizabeth, I send to you, but half the time you're busy and Elizabeth will read through it. And she's like a super cheerleader. And she's always like, she's it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, girl. cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I actually don't have beta readers, alpha readers, uh, critique partners or anything like that. I just I don't know why that's just you me. used to before I yeah. started writing books yeah. and in, in the beginning I did and I think it was but then I, I bailed out on you yeah yeah I had a it was I just suck. no you were fine you're fine and you you were you were kind of like a cheerleader too like you know like and I'm kind of a cheerleader for you you know like we we're not necessarily that person for each other that's gonna gut the other person's book yeah and honestly I don't want anybody to gut my book that's like in the story creation side, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I feel like the, the editor is kind of like a beta reader too. I don't know. I mean, like the editors I've had aren't just looking for errors. Like they do check, you know, all of that stuff. And then, so you have an editor Mm -hmm. do after you get back um, done with your edits, do you also use a proofreader? Well, I do two rounds of edits. So after they tell me to fix everything, I go back in there and then we do that again. And then I read it after, after I've done two rounds of edits, I read it again on my Kindle. And cause even still you miss like yeah. a typo or two. And then I am like, this is amazing. And then I send it to my proofer friends and I have three of them that will proofread it for me. And, um, they're all Eagle eyes. And, um, but one of them is like, um, very particular and so she notices things like she'll say is this an Oklahoma thing or is this like I've never heard of this saying before yeah if it's regional or whatever yeah and I'm like yeah that's a Christie thing like I say that my character is living in New York he does not need to say that you know and so it's not it's not the same as Oklahoma and so she forgot about stuff like that and she kind of like um overly picks at things not necessarily typos just little things that, and it's good. Like it's, it may, and not, I don't change everything she says, but she makes me take a second look at it. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe if that's bothering her, it's going to, you know, bother the reader. Other so, people, yeah. Yeah. And so that's like my last line of defense is her. And I will, you know, grab the, the last few weird things. And then, and then it goes to the formatter and then she does it all. And then I usually read it one more time after I get it back from her because I just love to send her more things to fix. <laughs> right. Yeah. I always feel guilty when I have to do right. that. And then it's, then it's done. And occasionally the arc readers will find something that slips through and I just want to beat my head against the wall. I know. Like, huh? really? You've read it so them, many times. Like, yeah. And then occasionally it'll even make it past all them and then it'll be a reader who bought it and been like did you see there was this typo there I'm like kill me now so you gave me a really good piece of advice the very after the very first book that I wrote and I got my edits back and I was feeling like a bag of shit and (laughs) some of the things that she was telling me I was like I don't know about this and the piece of advice you gave me is 
just because the editor tells you that it's wrong or it should be fixed doesn't mean you have to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And I still think about that every single time I'm looking through my book and especially with Bexley's Biker, because Bexley was such a tough cookie. Um, and whoever I had reading it was telling me that I should soften her up a little bit. And I just kept thinking, no, I, she's, she's a bitch. Like that's who she is, you know? And that it was your voice in my head saying, you don't have to, you know, take every piece of advice that your editor gives you. Right. So. Right. And, and it's, that's there. And you got to think about it this way is they're on your team to help you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not someone trying to make you feel stupid. They're trying to make your book better. They're being paid to make your book better. And, you know, for the most part, you do need to go and fix a lot of the things that they're telling oh, you yeah. Yeah. sticking out, but then, you know, stylistic choices and stuff. Those are just kind of suggestions. And I do like, if it's a lot of times I'll be like, mm, I, I kind of really want, I'm, I'm loving this part. So if I'm really loving it, I'm just going to keep it. Cause for me personally, sometimes some of my harder, like, um, boundary pushing spots are part of my charm. So I don't ever want to yeah. like dull those down. So right. I, I do kind of like stick by my guns on those, but, um, yeah. And, but for the most part, you got to think they're on your team and they're trying to right. make it awesome too. And they're attaching their name to it. So they want to be proud mm -hmm. of it, you know? So, right. I mean, you're, you're basically helping them sell more or get more business because someone says, oh, wow, I read that book and it was awesome. And I didn't see any errors and it flowed really well. Who was her editor? I want to use mm -hmm. her, you know, so they're in the business too, to, you know, help it be amazing. So, and they're not like sitting around with a checklist, you know, for waiting on second round edits to be like, did she change that one little part? Right. Yeah. Put a little note here and she's not getting a Christmas card this year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're a very clean writer. You, I mean, it, for as many edits as you think that you have, I think you're a million times more clean than I am. So my process goes through, we, I go through a lot more steps. <laughs> I have, I have someone reading it kind of as I write it. Um, and then I have a beta team that gets it after I've written it and I've gone through it. I import it into my remarkable, which is like a Kindle, except for a tablet and I can write on it. So as I read it, I, I write on it and I change things and then I go through and change that. And then I, after that, I send it to the beta team after the beta team gets it back, I'll go through and make all of their changes, read it again. And then it'll go to my editor twice. And then I send it to a proofreader because when I write, I go so fast that I leave words out constantly, like little words, like of, the, a, you know, all of those things. I completely skip right past them. And no matter how many times it goes through different people, you know, I'll, I'll always find those. So I also have to hire a proofreader <laughs> and then I'll go through it one more time after that, before I send out arcs. So you have like 10 steps less than me, <laughs> well, but I just wanted to tell like people that are not clean like that, like, you know, there's, oh, you can always reference hot mess me right. <laughs> for and then, how many steps. And there's even like, even further than that, like, you know, just because, you know, some people are excellent storytellers, but they are weak on the grammar and all of that stuff. And so that's, they re rely heavily on the editor to yeah. shape up their story and make it all fancy and pretty and sparkly. And that's okay. They're still a writer. Is that is their story. And that's what you pay editing for. Um, for me, like I grew up like English nerd, like, like before all of this, like when I was in college, I considered being an English teacher. So like that part for me is just it's just, it's just programmed in my brain. So mm -hmm. I don't have to, you know, I, yes, I have errors and I have mistakes and stuff, but that's like, just, you know, I came already, like my brain was already rewired and or wired to do that stuff 
okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and everybody falls everywhere in between that because all storytellers from all different walks of life or, you know, they, some people are probably really good at math, but they have a good story to tell. And so they're, they're lacking on some of the, you know, grammar and punctuation and stuff that you learn through editing and things as you get your stuff edited. Whereas for me, like I totally suck at math, but you know, I do better on the grammar. So. Yeah. I, uh, I have gotten much better than I was with my first book. I really try when I'm editing, not to just accept, accept, accept all of the changes that come through. I really try to like, look at it, look at the sentence Mm -hmm. and then take a note of it in my head so that next time I could not make that same mistake. Of course I still do because I'm me, but I at least try. (laughs) I'm the same as you. And, but we're not, did you know, not everybody is that way. Some people just hit accept all and move along. And I am too much of a control freak. I need to see what I need to double check that you put that comma in the right spot, even though I have no idea if that comma yeah, really no go there, but I will just decide when I get there, you know, <laughs> I'm such a, such a control Commas are like such a nightmare to begin with. Let, let me just say that. Like I will never understand commas. Yeah. Ever. I, mean, I, I, I understand about, I understand about 60% of the time you know, I like when it comes to dialogue and stuff, I've got that down pat, but yeah. when you've just got like this long old sentence and there's like a bunch of commas thrown in there, I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. and my husband's over here in my ear going, it's, you put a comma whenever you take a breath. And I'm yeah. like, sometimes I don't take a breath. I talk a lot. I do it all in one <laughs> breath. You know, and he's like, I, you and can he, say a lot of words in one breath. Let me just right? say and, that. And he takes a lot of pauses when he talks to like, let you feel the emphasis of his words. So his <laughs> stuff's probably littered with commas. <laughs> we'll just start calling him the comma king. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the, I don't know what I mean. What I am. Run on and he words. doesn't have filler words like he says what he means and he says it with the least amount of words possible but they have the most impact possible right. too exactly but you know and that's a good point too um he was actually the one you know everybody's always like oh you write such good mails and it wasn't always that way when I first started out my my mails were very you know very crispy and he, I said, Ooh, read this one part. And it was with rock bottom, which was in my Vegas Aces series way back when. And it was this good long passage. And I was like, Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. And it was music. So I wanted him to like read it. And he goes, a guy wouldn't say that. And I was like, Oh, what? <laughs> and he was like, they would say, blah, 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 whatever it was. And I was like, seriously, you want me to cut all this? And he was like, yeah. It blew my mind and I was like, <laughs> okay, okay. And, and I started writing like my husband speaks. Mm-hmm. So a lot of like clipped sentences and uh, just, just I, I really started like incorporating how he speaks into my characters. And as a result, I, I honestly feel like it made them more realistic. You know, it wasn't, yeah. they don't sound like Christy. They sound like, mm-hmm. you know, a an arrogant dude or whatever they are, you know, and it just, you know, it was funny because he was the one that helped me write men better, Yeah, you know, and he doesn't read my books, but it was just like one of those, I always say he keeps me humble because it doesn't matter what I tell him, whatever, like amazing thing I do. He tells me how to do it better Yeah, or reach a little further because (laughs) you're not there yet. (laughs) Ty does that too. Uh Ty absolutely does that too. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, look at this. This is so great. And he's like, okay, yeah, that's good, but let's get to here. And I'm like, oh, okay. We we married pretty pretty much the same kind of dude. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's, uh, that's a goal, but can we just like relish in this moment, please? Just for a minute. (laughs) Uh, He always says, why are you fishing for compliments? And I'm like, I don't know, but give them to me. So I don't have to fish. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly it's the same thing with the editors you just need you need a couple good things like we have um I have an editor that I've used in the past that she is just a tough cookie and 
I appreciated all of her corrections because she was absolutely right. And she was just amazing at what she does, but she was really stingy with the compliments. So every time she said anything good, I would just, my book is the most amazing thing in the whole entire world. Uh All because she said, Ooh, I like this part. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Almost like you believed it more because she didn't give them, she gave them so sparingly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. She really must mean it. She said that. (laughs) I know, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you working on right now? Oh, Oh, nothing. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) I'm working on nothing. Yes. (laughs) I know (laughs) because I was just dying to finish my deadlines which were for um dangerous press and I had to get it done earlier than I expected because I don't think I'm allowed to say but anyway I, I just for realized reasons. I better, yeah I better not say because I don't want to get myself in trouble <laughs> I get in trouble sometimes um so but anyway I had to get it done a little bit quicker than I expected and um I enjoyed writing those books it was so much fun I mean, I do love how they turned out. They're really good, but um, it just took every ounce of me out of me to get it done in time. And then those edits came along and it, for the first book, and it was just like so hard. And I, and I thought I was done. Like literally, I turned in book two, and the same day I got the edits for book one, and I was like, <gasps> and it was so hard. And I was like, I did. <laughs> anyway, so I finished it. I turned it in a couple of days ago, and then it was like I finally could breathe, and it's like, okay, you know, I'm working on, I I would say the next thing that I'm going to work on is um, the last aliens book with Nicole. Mm -hmm. We literally have three chapters and an epilogue left. Like, what are we doing? And she's just waiting on me. She's she's like looking at me like, Christy, you've had that manuscript since September. You're going to do something with it. And I'm like, "Ah." so that is my next thing that I'm going to work on. And have another thing that I'm working on that I'm, I can't really tell anybody. I can tell you later. Okay. <laughs> <Don't wanna know. laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not an open book best moment. This is a closed book bestie moment. <laughs> <laughs> tell them later. Oh, well now I'm, now I'm like, okay, let's pause the show. Cause I right. want to know. Just I may have already know. told you. So oh, don't okay. get too excited. And oh, then, um, wait, let me think, I think there's, let's see, what else do I have? Nothing else pressing. So nothing yeah. else pressing, but we need to work on our BFB, our Bricks Ferry Bay series. We do, but I want you to get finished with all your stuff, whatever you're working on before oh, we that. Cause you cannot have that much stress. I really going want to think days. about what I'm working on. So that will be definitely coming and on the, yeah. I was actually thinking about Briggs Ferry Bay this morning, getting ready. So I told somebody that they're, they'll be out in 2022. So I've already said it. Oh God. <laughs> now it has to happen. <laughs> <Ain't> you misty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so last week, okay. Everybody knows that I've just been a disaster since October. So, um, since that happened I'd been working on Riley's Biker which releases February 25th um but I wasn't enjoying it I wasn't liking it I didn't like I didn't even know where I was going like I was just typing for the sake of I need to get words in um and so I don't even know what happened but one day I just decided I hate it I'm I'm scrapping it which is stupid because it has to be to my editor by January 10th, but I did it anyway. So last week, that's what I did. Started all over. I'm like 27,000 words in, in a week, which I think is really good because I ate shit last week. I was walking my dogs and looking at my watch and just fell face first into the concrete. Um, Thought I broke my hand, but I didn't. Thank God. So, um, that took up an entire day in urgent care. So I'm mm-hmm. pretty proud of where I'm, I'm going. The story is amazing. The characters are amazing. I'm just clacking away. Good job. Well, and I've decided, you know, there are stories that I'm going to write. Okay. Obviously, but I am going to take a breath yeah. and, 
um, not put anything in stone because yeah. that's what always kills my mojo, my creativity, everything. It's when I don't have anything in stone, I will crank out nine books. Yeah. So I am less productive when I put those dates hard on a calendar. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'd rather yeah. just like, you know, I finally cleared off my schedule to where I can just let things happen organically and mm -hmm. right from the heart and all that. And anytime I do that, I, I come up with something really magical that's people just go nuts over. So I'm trying to give myself space for that, you know, yeah. and I feel like it's important because we start off writing that story that's just calling to us. And then we have all these other stories and then we start making promises. And then next thing you know, we have ourselves so planned out for the next two years and people are waiting on that because we've told them or, mm -hmm. you know, in our brain, we have it set that way and we're, you know, holding ourselves accountable to it. And it's hard. It, it just stresses you out too much and you're not having fun anymore. And I'm sorry, but I like to have fun at work. Yeah. Uh, we are the opposite in that way because I am a world-class procrastinator and I can justify anything like, okay, whoever's listening, if you need something in your life, but you can't justify it, hit me up. I will find a way to justify it because that's who I am. Uh, so I need deadlines. Otherwise I just won't do it. I'll spend my time thinking around on the internet, watching TikTok. Um, so I definitely need like hard and fast deadlines to get things done, which is why I am now like so inspired to finish Riley's Biker because I have like three weeks to do it and Christmas is in there. So, mm -hmm. well, but I am glad I, you're taking right now off because the holidays are important to you. Yes, they are. And, and I do try to take December off like, and it started when I had shoulder surgery. Yeah. Um, I remember yeah, that. Ago, and I was, I had it like a week before Thanksgiving. So I was basically forced to not do anything all through the holidays. And it was so wonderful. And I was like, I got to do this. So I kind of like made it a tradition after yeah. that. And um, I just like to be able to, you know, if I want to go shopping, I have the day off, if I can go do it, you know? And, um, but that being said, um, one of the things that helped me finish my deadline um, last week or whenever it was, was I was doing um, sprints with my friend Lilith and another girl that I didn't even know. It was just one of her friends. And, and then Danny Renee too was in there. And, and um, we had the O'Right room, you know, and they have a different, they're in the UK. So their schedule is different than mine, but it just worked out that by the time I finished all the things I was working on and was ready to write that they were, they were off work and it was the evening time and they were ready to write. So it, yeah. it kind of like worked out. And they were, you know, a lot of times I don't like going into those oh right rooms because everybody likes to chit chat um, and it distracts me. And they they were really good about, okay, we're going to go for 30 minutes. Don't chat until then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, good. And then I would just, you know, pound out some words. And then, and so I, I was able to get chapter, chapter, chapter. And I thought, you know, if I could actually make this more of a habit, regardless of deadlines, like just try to get in you know, writing on whatever story, it doesn't even matter. Um, and just have those days where I can sprint words, you know, I feel like it would just be more beneficial and I could get more done. So that might be something for you to consider since you, yeah, last you know, week, um, CE Ricci and I, and who else was in there? Oh, I think it was Callie Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. Um, we were doing some sprints in there, mm -hmm. uh, and it totally does help, but it just gave me an idea when you said that, Mm -hmm. Since we have our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. we could do live sprints <gasps> together yeah. on mm -hmm. YouTube and have it stream to whatever service. So, so basically you're saying that someone's going to watch me type the whole time. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't get this. They're going to stare at me like, well, I'm doing this. They're going to see all my well, faces. No, like, Okay. <laughs> Um, How does it work? Explain. Yeah, to the I mean, yeah, they're gonna look at you. You know who who does it is uh, Lila, Lyra, Lyra Parish. Uh, yeah, she does I, those, and I've joined into a few of hers. In so many words were written, it's incredible. Really? Yeah, okay, but okay. yeah, I mean, she has a timer, mm -hmm. and otherwise, you're just watching her work. 
but you're not watching her work because you have your manuscript up and you're clacking away and then the timer goes off and then you go in and you go back to the youtube and chat for a little bit have some fun and then to go again yeah i think it would be fun yeah it would and you know um it just would be we would have to figure out a good time because yeah like I, you and I write for different times. And that's why people are probably wondering, like, why aren't Misty and Christy in the same oh right sprinting room? Why are they breaking up? And it's like, no, so many people have different like writing times and you and me never hardly s- sync up at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. like it's rare. Like, and we, when we do, we try to write together, but it's, it's very rare that you and I yeah. sync up together. Well, I used to be a night writer like my kids would go, it's last year when they were doing school from home and I didn't have to get up with them in the morning. Like they just logged in on their own. So last year I was a night rider. I'd stay up until three in the morning, just writing. And because the house is quiet, everything's quiet around me and I can focus. Nobody is like trying to talk to me online. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I used to write, but this year I've, I've been so messed up. So what I've been trying to do is write in the morning but Mm -hmm. my brain just doesn't wake up until like midnight. (laughs) Well, see, I'm I'm a night owl. Yeah. Well, and I am a night owl, but at night it's like, I don't want, it's kind of like with my weekends, like it's almost like my brain has gone on strike and I want time for myself. Even if that time is staring at the wall, I'd rather stare at the wall than do anything else. And my brain goes on strike, but for me, I like to get up in the morning, like on the days, like, you know, and I'll sprint in the mornings, like on Tuesdays or Thursdays or something and get a few hours in. Um, but then a good time for me to sprint and I get a lot of words in is actually like around the 4.30 time, just mm. right before dinner. Um, and my daughter gets home a lot of times and she'll be ready to go play her video games or whatever. So she's like out of my hair. And, and that's when um, like Lilith and them, they're they're what five or six hours ahead of me so they're it's evening time and they're writing mm-hmm. their husbands have already been fed and you know they're in bed or watching tv or whatever so they're able to sit down and write and so it's yeah. like a good time um so I've been doing that too and then also um my friend Xavier Neal we try to I love her to, uh, I know me too She's so, so sweet. we try to have she is so sweet. I'm telling you what, she motivates yeah. me and checks in on me. Like she's a good friend and like, make sure I'm doing okay. And it makes me feel like a terrible friend. Cause I'm not good at doing that with people. Like, like there'll be times where it'll be like five in the afternoon. I'm like, I wonder if Misty's alive, you know, like, <laughs> you know, how it is. I know we suck. We suck at that. Both of us do. We do. But like, she'll check on me and she's like, well, how are you doing this week? Are you getting lots of words in? And I'm like, Oh, thank you. You care about me. And so, but anyway, she and I do a lot of, um, Tuesday, Thursday, sometimes Wednesday, uh, morning rights. Cause she's a morning mm. person. So, a lot of times after I drop off Avery at school and I get home and it's like nine o'clock, she's ready. She's been up for a couple hours and, and then she's real good about, well, you know, I need to take a break and go take a walk. And I'm like, Oh, we got to take a break to walk. Like what? (laughs) She's like good about like mental health, you know, like don't just to your computer. And so she'll be like, are you going to get up and do something? And I'm like, I guess, I guess I'll go climb the stairs for walk the stairs (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because, okay. I have to interject here. (laughs) you have trainers mm-hmm. that are trying to get you fit okay kidding. you have exercise equipment in your garage that you won't use nope. and you have like a neighborhood that you could walk Ooh. to get your daily exercise but you won't go outside so instead you climb your stairs over and over up and down, 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 up and down. And then the dog likes to sit at the very top. So I have to climb all the way up to like the 12th step, not the 13th or whatever. And the other day, Holly, my sister was like, you got to do the stairs. And I was like, okay. And I started doing the stairs. She was like, Chris, you have to go all the way to the top. And I was like, the dog is there. Okay. And she was like, so you're not even doing the full stairs. You're like half-assing the stairs. And I'm like, it's still stairs. <laughs> that sounds like holly well and then the the trader ladies they were like now listen you know you you've got to get some some exercise and i was like i'm too busy and the girl was like 
and we got on a phone call and she, and I said, I'm too busy. And she said, you, you're too busy for your 30 minute workout. And I said, yeah. And she said, well, that's funny. Cause you weren't too busy to take this call. And we've been on the phone for 30 minutes. And I was like, Oh, she <laughs> called me out. And I was like, you're right. She said, well, why don't you do five minutes of stair climbing? And I was like, five minutes. She said, yeah, while well, you're on this deadline, make it a daily challenge to do five minutes. And of course, you know, five minutes, I've got to be an overachiever because that's my brain. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to do 10, even though it's still not 30 minutes, but in my brain, I doubled it. And, you know, and so I did my 10 minutes on the stairs every single day. And she, I would tell her and she'd be like, go Christy. And I'd be like, go me. And um, so I got to the end and, and my deadline ended. And I completely forgot that I told them when my deadline was done and everything. So then I wake up on a Monday morning after my deadline and I get ready to climb the stairs and I open my little app to get the stairs. And it's like 30 minute cardio workout. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they are so good about trying to hold you accountable and I was like oh no and I was like <laughs> trying to do this and I was like this is terrible I was like what excuse can I come up with now <laughs> <laughs> I think the stairs are so much more difficult than taking a walk. So it just blows my mind that you choose to do that because I climb my stairs up and down. Like today is laundry day. So my ass is up and down the stairs 18,000 times. And I'm like, I just keep thinking every single time Christy chooses to do this. Why would I want to go outside? Like <laughs> seriously. And that's what the, and that's what my little trainer lady said. They said, well, you know, you could ma- go take a walk. And I, I looked at her and I said, I'm not going to take a walk. And she's like, oh, but, but it's no longer summer. I know you can't handle the heat. And I said, yeah, I don't like bugs either. And she was like, well, and I said, or the sun, I don't like the sun or the wind or (laughs) yeah. And I was like, and the wind and also like people wave to me or say hi. And I don't want to say hi to them. (laughs) And I said, so I'm just gonna be real honest. I'm not going to walk outside. And she was like, okay, then you need to do the stairs. I was like, okay. (laughs) And she kept saying, what's, she kept saying get on the Bowflex. And, and Holly was in out of Holly was listening to my phone chat and because it was on the Zoom and Holly was over here and she's sniggering over there. And I was like, uh. and, and I was like, yeah, I'll do the stairs. And the lady's like, and the Bowflex. And, and I kept correcting her to stairs. And then the stairs. Holly was, yeah, Holly was like, why did you do that? I was like, I didn't get on the Bowflex. She said, she said, does she know that you moved it to the garage? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I ain't get on that thing. <laughs> You know, what's funny is, um, when you told me the story about how you got your dog, you have a dog blue Mm -hmm. and she is like round and looks like a potato, (laughs) but when you first got her, she expected to like go outside and go for walks and go and do things. And she'd wait by your front door and you guys just had to train her. Like we don't leave the house. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Blue, yes. once you walked through the door, like this is your home now, get used to it. That, that's what, this is what we call the Webster way. Yeah. <laughs> so like when my grandparents come to town and they, they get used to, you know, I'll make, you know, I'll make grandmother some hot chocolate. I'll bring them little snacks. I'll put them on a show. I'll get them a little blanket. We got to be cozy and, and just chill. You know, <laughs> whenever they go to Holly's, it's like, we're going to go shopping. We're going to go to Walmart. We're going to go do this. And we're going to go do that. And then we're going to make brownie houses and we're going to do all this stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> No, not in our house. <laughs> You're going to chill. <laughs> Let's turn on a Christmas movie. We are yeah. not leaving this spot right here. Yeah, Get even cozy. Last time, even last time, grandmother was like, are we going to go to the grocery store? And I'm like, girl, I already ordered no. the groceries and they're on the way. And she was like, yeah. and I was like yeah, this is the Webster way. <laughs> I'm kind of the house. same because my mom she likes to go to the store. She likes to touch things. She likes to see different brands. She likes to, you know, just do all of that. And so whenever she comes to my house and I order my groceries online, she just, it just drives her nuts, drives her absolutely nuts. She wants to go to the store so bad. Well, and the argument, the argument that my mother-in-law always says is, you know, she'll say, well, I really want to go touch the things. How do you know that they're not going to pick the the bad produce? And I say, well, that's just the chance I'm willing to take. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I get funky bananas. bananas. (laughs) Yep. 
Yeah. And well, then and you, like, you bitch about it when you get it and you're like, yeah. oh, gosh, these suck. Bananas. But yeah. doesn't change anything. You still order them next week. <laughs> well, and I, um, I, I stopped using Walmart because I felt like they just didn't care. But I, I, I use this place called Ship and they have like personal shoppers or whatever. And you can um, like save a person as your favorite and Ooh. this girl she she's helped me a couple times and she's super friendly like her customer service is like so out there and she's always like sending me pictures and like oh and very apologetic like they're out of the Hershey's bars times 11 that you wanted you know and I'm like <laughs> okay get seven you know but anyway so we go back and forth and 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 she was and so the last time she came and she delivered the groceries and I felt so bad because I ordered like I'm not even joking like 27 giant things of soda <laughs> and like dog food and like you know the the humongous thing of toilet paper and, and paper towels so this I, I thought she's not even gonna be able to fit this in the grocery bag or in the cart yeah. anyway so she gets there and I open the door and she normally she drops all the groceries there and then she texts me and says you know the groceries are on the porch and she tells me how she arranged them and then you know thank you so much have a blessed day or whatever and then this time I, I like open the door and she was there and she was like, oh my gosh, it's so good to finally meet you. And I was like, oh my Aww. gosh, you. And she was so nice. And she's like, well, normally I rearrange the bags to, you know, all the cold stuff here and all this over here. So, you know, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to do that because you opened the door. And I was like, it's okay. Thank you. And then, um, and then I went on to the little app and I added her as my favorite shopper. And I was just like, I got a favorite shopper now. So what you're saying is now on top of all of the other people you have working for you, you have a personal shopper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, I can't work harder. Okay. <laughs> that's the, that's the lie I tell myself. <laughs> it's probably why I get anxiety when I'm not working because it's like, crap, I got a whole army of people to help me because I tell them I'm working. So this staring at the wall thing and cutting it. <laughs> you got people to pay. Exactly. That's so funny. Uh, so we are to the time and I'm just realizing usually we talk about what we're, what we're reading and what we're listening to before we even like get on here. Mm -hmm. um so that we're prepared we didn't You're do that prepared? I'm, oh, not prepared. I, I'm prepared I got my, I got right. my over here and everything you go first okay okay so let's talk about audiobooks first okay. I, I am listening to a book called what if it's us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera and I think Adam Silvera might have wrote that book called we both die at the end or whatever. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's mm -hmm. YA and it's really super cute and it's funny and awkward and it's MM and it's just like a meet cute kind of story and I'm really enjoying it. And the narration's really, really good. So um, I'm probably about uh, halfway through that one. Um, and then eyeball reading on my um, Kindle, I got one that I'm actually halfway through right now that I'm loving is called Soul Eater by Lily Main. And it's MM and it's between a human and a monster. Ooh. So, and he is basically, he's, I don't know, sucks the souls out of humans or something. Anyway, he's supposed to be like a villain, like a bad guy, but he takes a liking to um, the main human character and it's really good and it's so interesting. And I was telling you about this one a little bit about the parts of yeah. the man that's different and how his um, anatomy like functions. And it was, I'm just so interested in weird stuff like that. And so I was just absolutely loving like all the, the weird stuff that was happening in this book. So I'm, I'm reading that one and it's really sweet too. Cause a lot of MM books are really sweet and I like those. Yeah. Um, they're the way they're intimate with each other. I don't know. It's just sweet. Um, and then I read a book called, they call him levity by Davidson King. And it is a story about um, a homeless guy and a mafia leader mm. and the homeless guy like works the corner trying to, you know, panhandle or is that what they call it when they try to get money or whatever. Yeah. And um then they get, like give a portion to the mafia dude because it's like his territory his I, I don't really, yeah yeah and so but anyway they he this levity guy earns a lot of money 
because he's got this real just interesting personality and he's funny and people like want to give him money because he makes them stop and not just ignore him and since it's such a like an obscene amount of money this mafia dude's like what's what is he doing over there like i don't want the cops to be like attracted over there because something's happening and he's holding up traffic so we need to find what he's doing so he shows up in his lamborghini um to see what he's doing and instantly is charmed by levity so it it's like their little story and you know it's the um difference in the class like you know obviously levity's really poor and sal's yeah. got a lot money and blah 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 so anyway it's a cute story so oh i got myself hot talking about that <laughs> I'm a hot flash. I'm a hot flash here so okay so and then the other two books that i read and i think i talked about this last one but i got the um paperback which was oh, yeah. the safe cat and yeah. that one is a screenwriting book and you talked about how you read the um um the novel version novel version yeah. right and I printed this off the internet and it's like a PDF and it's, it's a breakdown of that save the cat, the, the beat, the beat sheet. Yeah. That's and what's attached to the audiobook too. Yeah. Okay. So I, I printed that one off and I got it and, and I'm going to plot a book using this format Ooh. that I've learned. I really want to just see how easy it would be to write after I plotted all this to, yeah. I, I want to see, I just want to try it out. And so that's one of the things I'm going to um work on and then let's see doo, 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 doo. what else have i got oh i just finished reading this one today and it's called romancing the beat that's a good one and it was really good and it kind of went hand in hand with the save the cat book yeah. so i'm wanting to take what i learned in save the cat and in this book and merge them together to write a story because flipping back to talking about edits um one of my weaknesses was my conflict my areas of conflict so it wasn't strong enough it wasn't compelling and so i would like to work on that and funnel my outline into these beats to see if i can really strengthen the conflict and make it more compelling and that is why i'm going to read this book next mm. and this one is the conflict thesaurus so I'm going to go through and read each little conflict and what what happens and maybe that will inspire me for when I'm writing and I can refer back to it so that was that I want to plot my next book too okay let's do it. using that same because I was thinking about that today um with Riley's Biker, since I kind of now know what's going to happen, I went through each chapter on Scrivener and kind of like wrote down what needs to happen each chapter. And it mm -hmm. is helping me just fly through words. Right. So I think if I even took it a step further and tried to plot, mm -hmm. I might change everything once I get yeah. writing, but I want to try. Same. This could be a game changer for us because. Yeah we have we are good storytellers but we are not very organized people no. and no. so if we could figure out how to organize this aspect of our creativity it might just lock everything into place and take us to number one that is yeah. so y'all right. check back in a year from now yeah. and we will see if we made 2022 our bitch yeah and also this one Yes, that's the one I'm I read. telling you. This is the seven figure fiction by T. Taylor. I read it on my way home from Utah and it changed. And actually, when I said I don't know what happened, why I decided to scrap my story, I do know it's I read this book. <laughs> yes. And then I was like, boom, everything just clicked. And yeah. Yes. And that's because she was basically saying there are kernels of stories that everybody wants. And the more you fill those in to yeah. your story, the more juicy and more exciting and more, you know, I don't know, people are just hooked into the story. And so if you're more um, strategic about when you're outlining and plotting and everything by adding in those universal fantasies, then it will help make it a juicier story because basically the whole point of that novel was that have you ever read, read a book and you just weren't sure why you loved it so much? You just did. Yeah. And if you went through and pulled out all the universal fantasy fantasies that were in it, you would be like, oh, okay, now I get it. You know? And yeah. so 
um, she was basically saying she tries to make every chapter have a universal fantasy of some sort in it mm -hmm. to really just make the book dense with them. Yeah. So I, I, that's, that's the other thing. I read that book plus save the cat plus romancing the beat. And it's like, okay. And then I had those ready. Really intense edits and I'm like, I'm yeah. going to whip out a book that y'all is going to blow y'all's mind. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Also, yeah. can I just say Amazon, Amazon's quality with this book, Oh my gosh. the pages just fall out as I read them. And oh it really gosh. irritated me. That's, Amazon that's neither here nor there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. Maybe we can like talk about our process as we um, plot, as we actually plot. Can we do it? Yeah, because we, and wouldn't it be interesting? And this is another thing I was sitting, I was sitting on the toilet thinking about this because you know, all my great so ideas. I'm glad you in the, created that in the imagery bathroom. for me. And I thought, what if I go from a pantser to a plotter? Like, whoa. I was dun, like, dun, dun. I know, I was like, this is some <laughs> epicness. And I was like, Plot I mean, twist. I know, I was like, I could write a book on becoming a plotter from a pantser. I got to make it happen first. But like, yeah. that would be really you cool. You got to make it happen. <laughs> and you got to be successful with it too. <laughs> but that's how my brain works. It's like, oh, I could write a book about you know, a random thing to help people. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. Okay. So I am, I, I listened to the seven sins of snow. I, I said that last time. So that was two weeks ago. That's how long it took me to get through that book. It was really good, really dark, um, reverse harem because each of the seven sins are like a vampire. Mm. So she has to like get the essence of each man mm -hmm. um, and accept his sin before she can defeat the evil queen. Right. Wow. So um, there was, there was a lot of like her with each guy. And then there was a lot of her with all seven oh, wow. guys. It was, it was so smutty. It's probably the smuttiest book I've read in a really long time. Wow. Um, I felt like every single chapter I listen to audiobooks like out loud from my phone. Um, and usually I can do chapters, like entire chapters, without having to switch to my AirPods in fear of my kids or my husband overhearing. I could not, I had to have my earbuds in the entire time because every single chapter was so loaded with smut. So I, I finally finished that one. <laughs> and, that uh, you know. A lot of cold water calm me down. Uh, and uh, my PA, Ariadna, she messaged me just randomly with this um, book. And she's like, you're welcome. And so I was like, this is a sports romance. Like, why is she sending that to me? But, you know, I trust her. She knows what she's talking about. So I went and downloaded it. And I said, all right, I've got the audio book. And she's like, oh, that wasn't meant for you. <laughs> I didn't mean to send that to you. I meant to just, I meant to send it to someone else. And I'm like, oh, oh well, I already bought it. So oh, um, funny. I've been listening to that one. It's by Ali Sizz and it's called Looking to Score. And it's really, really cute and sweet. And, um, and actually I really love it. And the narrators are amazing. So I've been listening to that one, but then I kind of switched over back to Gianna Darling's um, fallen men series because I just can't get enough of it I really can't and now she has those alt covers with the females on them coming out mm -hmm. like the seventh yeah. or whatever uh -huh. and I'm like I'm just gonna go and buy those too mm -hmm. yeah I saw those today and I was like oh those are so pretty <laughs> they're so pretty and mm -hmm. I just love that series so much and I haven't read the last two books so they're now on audio and I just decided I'm gonna listen to the entire thing start to finish you go girl so that's what i'm doing and i'm with daddy zeus right now which oh, i just love him favorite that is my favorite he is so good it's so yummy oh. that's, that's still one of my favorite books to this day like i just and one of my favorite male characters ever i know and it's zachary weber that is the narrator so um yeah oh my gosh he, we just got to the part where he buys the strip club that she's working at mm -hmm. 
and so like things are just starting to happen and that's when it starts getting juicy oh my gosh Mm -hmm. just love it I can't wait I love that one yeah so that's that's what I'm doing I'm not physically reading any books because I just haven't had time right now I seriously I do all of my work um right first thing in the morning I'm at my computer by like nine because I have to wake up at 5 30 for my kids um so after I get them off to school I'm like at my computer and I just write and write and write and write until I have to go pick them up mm-hmm. then I come home and write and write and write and write and by the time by the end of the day my brain is just so done with words mm-hmm. yeah and that's kind of you know by the time I'm working all day it's like that's why in the evening it's like I can't jump on and sprint with anybody because my brain's like "Mm, we're done so I've been reading and doing a lot of just mindless scrolling on the internet just to yeah I don't know just to chill for three seconds brain break yeah for sure but then I have this problem where I feel creative do you do that when you're in downtime and you start to feel Mm -hmm. creative and you're like just chill we're watching a movie yeah you're like but I could make a graphic but I could Mm -hmm. outline the story but I could do this and it's like no you're supposed to be relaxing oh yeah that happens all the time Mm -hmm. or especially if I ever am sitting in front of the tv I just think like I could be doing something while I do that Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah it's more important just to like let your brain yeah take a breather well and I went shopping the other day with my mom and my sister and well first of all we went and ate at this place called <laughs> the big biscuit and it was so Ooh. good it was so good I'm what did you, you have I had a big biscuit oh, a big <laughs> but, yeah, it had I got this one that had like um it was like an appetizer it had like um cinnamon and icing and cranberries and pecans like all on it and then that was the appetizer yeah and then <laughs> I know and then I had like a breakfast thing it was like some eggs and then with sausage in it and then some biscuits and gravy which is really good there Oof. and then um some hash browns and I took the rest home to Matt but um it was so good and then I don't know why I decided we were going to eat that before we went shopping but at least we walked it off and um but anyway the whole time we were having breakfast and then we went shopping and we went to Barnes and Noble and like you know all these fun places uh Target and you went to Barnes and Noble and bought the entire store yes we did and my sister was she like basically cussed me out like what and I was like I can't help it my mom was like go girl you know like I had a pile of things in the in the in the aisle in the anime section or whatever and this guy I set him down so because I mean I had there's too much to carry and I walked to the end of the aisle to look at some books so I didn't have to carry the stuff and he like makes a beeline like right over to my pile and I said excuse me sir and he looked at me and I said that's my stuff and he was like, oh, he was going to clean it up. He was like, do not clean my things up. These are mine. He said, do you need I'm just too weak to tote them around. He said, do you need a basket? And I was like, yeah. So he went and fetched me a basket and I loaded all my stuff in there. But anyway, the whole time I was shopping, I completely just didn't think about work. I, I mean, I don't even think I messaged you or anybody. Like I just stayed mm-hmm. off the grid and shopped and enjoyed myself. And it was such a nice break after all of those edits and working so hard and I think they did yeah yeah for sure and you bought the store (laughs) you showed me all your books and I'm like did you leave anything left for anybody else no I've got tons of stuff there and I would do it again I love that store (laughs) I don't I don't ever really go into Barnes and Noble if I go into a bookstore it's like an uh an indie bookstore, mm-hmm. you know, because I don't tend to read very many traditionally published books except for like craft books. Mm-hmm. But well, I love there's me a good so indie. much stuff to look at at Barnes and Noble. It's not just, I mean, Avery goes there to look at all the toys, you know, oh, yeah. there's so much to look at. And then when you get ready to check out, they have like all this gift stuff, you know, and I could just sit there for an hour looking at like all the little cute things. That I might, yes, that I might need to buy myself. And 
Um, I actually found a really cool book for Matt for Christmas. He's not going to listen to this, but it's a um, a wilderness guide. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> if for something happened, like and you lost electricity, like how to like purify water and like do all oh. these like, survival things. And I just thought it was really cool. And then I thought also I'm going to steal it from him after he looks at it and sets it on his nightstand, never to look at it again. I'm going to steal it and I'm going to use it for research and writing. Oh yeah. It's really cool. I'll take love it. to write the wilderness stories. So yeah. that's perfect. Mm-hmm. So it was like a gift for him, but really good for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> gift for us. <laughs> gift for us. Couple gift. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we are going to ponder how we could get live sprints to work because I think it would be really cool and I think it would be fun. Um, so maybe we'll get that to work. Maybe not. Um, don't you have to have uh, do you have to have a certain amount of followers to be live on youtube i have no idea do we oh. have have do we even have any followers on youtube i, I think we oh I avery think, we have avery yeah. and i yeah i think we have one <laughs> but you know what's the what's the um requirement i'll have to check you- it out i'll check it out i'll do some research yeah because i think it would be fun and i think people would like to hang out with us yeah. And especially if we started, like, you know, kind of gave like a little Good schedule. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, we'll do it on this time. I feel like some people would join in. So I think so too. Uh, and otherwise we will be back in two weeks. Please, please, please subscribe because if we do have to have subscribers, we really, really need you. Um, and also <laughs> <laughs> to the podcast, to YouTube, um, go do it all. And then leave us comments. Let us know what you're thinking. Or drop into our DMs. We like that too. We've had a few people never too busy for anybody. Yeah. And and that was somebody messaged me and she's like, you said that it was okay to message you. And I really hope that that's true. And I'm like, yes, you know, I might be, I might be slow to respond sometimes because like I went on a shopping spree at Barnes and Noble, but I'll be back. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, So yeah, we will see you in two weeks and um yeah what is two weeks from now that's like right oh what is two right weeks from now i don't even know let me look at the calendar it's like the week the weekend before christmas or something it's the 19th so okay so we're okay will we will we be good your grandparents will be in town no they'll come the day after christmas so oh okay all right perfect yeah. see you guys so in we'll- two weeks yeah. bye, bye.